Now, we didn't talk about who does the introduction, so I'll just pick that up. Um, I'm Chris, and with me is Steve, and I'm in Germany, and Steve is in Toronto, Canada. Yep. Hi, guys. So, um, what is this? This is a pretty much the, base, the basics about OBS Ninja, which is a product that uh, you, Steve, have have made and are still making. Okay. So maybe maybe you tell us just a minute about that. Okay, well, OBS Ninja uh, is something that I put out at the beginning of the, the virus, let's call it, uh, uh -huh. pandemic. pandemic. Yeah, uh, back in February, March is when I guess I started working on it. Mm. Um, it's simply a tool that enables creators to pull remote videos in to OBS. Yes. And you can use that for using a smartphone as a virtual cam, or yeah. you can use it to produce uh, some pretty complex shows. And it's a free service with code available for you to white label. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, thanks to people like Chris providing lots of feedback and help. <laughs> I've been able to be <laughs> hulking, motivated. Hoping at you and okay. going, no, this doesn't work. <laughs> It, it's it's pushed the product to a point where it's actually uh, usable. Um, <laughs> I like to think at least we're, so, we're using it here. So you're using it here, and I'll I'll I usually explain what OBS Ninja is as it's it's a um, it's a transporter. It transports video and audio from point A to point B, from one web browser to the other, and we are using it right now. We're Both talking using, yep. real time without uh, any any bad delay, any latency, and um, OBS Ninja does that. So that's that's how I uh, that's how I um, try to break it down. And it, there's a ton of options. It can do so many things that it gets to a point where, the, I mean, it does have complexity. It's a, it's a tool for producers, right? For most of the time, I would, I would think producers would use that. Um, I wanna clarify one thing though. It's called OBS Ninja, and I think that is one of the most confusing things for people because OBS is not necessarily needed to use it, right? That, that, it's not true. OBS. It's not affiliated with OBS. No, it, it's mainly focused for OBS, though. There's mm -hmm. a lot of additional functionality that's been specifically built for OBS. It's definitely not needed, and there are alternative domains you can access this at. So you can access right. it through RTC, Real Time Chat Ninja. Um, it, OBS was was um, was just the, the focus to help uh, keep the product development focused. Right, and and it came at the right time for me. Um, I found it sometime early May when I was thinking about uh, more video production because I was grounded at home. As many were, and I I came across OBS Ninja, and it really enabled. It was an it, I let me try that sentence again. It was an enabling tool for me because it really gave me um, a way to remotely talk with people uh, again without too much latency, and that is the, with a good quality and little latency. We're talking. I, I don't know how how long the sig takes from Germany to Toronto, but I say it's probably under 200 milliseconds so it's about that yeah it's fast it's fast so it allows for fluid conversation and what we're doing here is a little we'll call it web series or something along those lines podcast whatever you want to call it um that gives you step by step the basics and then goes into more advanced concepts so this is the first episode of that right it took us long to get to this point in the explanation. So I think I think we show the, just the most basic concept, which is um, uh, it, how how does it work? People are might have have that question now. Well, how how do you actually do it? And I think the easiest way is to show um, the easiest way, easiest way to show it is by sending video from one browser to another and showing how that goes. So, so uh, yeah, switch switch over. Here here we are. We have two browsers here. Um, and I think first thing to note is it works really well in Chrome. It does work in Firefox, not quite as well as in Chrome. And then it don't even try Safari. It'll be difficult here. Um, there's, uh, it does work on mobile. 
Um, but it, the best platform is on a desktop, on a laptop with Google Chrome. And Ethernet. That's, and even that has problems. <laughs> but 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 these are not your problems um, because it it's built on WebRTC, which is an open communications protocol, right. which is just best implemented on Google Chrome, as far as I know. They're the ones who are helping to lead the, yeah. you know, the technology stack. Um, so yeah. So let, let's do a very quick demo here. Um, OBS.ninja slash equals my... So um, if you look at this URL, um, it pretty much shows you an ID. That is one you choose. So this is now the secret ID under which a stream will be sent. And if I click on share your camera, I can choose my camera. Um, let's use this one. And I can choose an audio source. So I have a bloody mess of audio sources here, but I'm just going to use my default microphone. It shows me that that's the one is active with this little meter here. And then there's an audio, uh, an audio output destination. Let me just use that one here. There's a little test button so I can now hear in my headphones that that's where the sound comes out. And I send it. And now that video goes out under that stream ID. That's pretty much the basics. And if you want to receive that video somewhere else, then all you have to do is, instead of push, use view, my secret ID. By the way, choose an ID that is unique. Because if you use the ID Jack, there's a good chance another Jack will use that same ID. We will talk in future episodes about how this can be protected so this doesn't happen. But um, by default, choose an obscure ID. So I hope no one else is using my secret ID. Actually, no one else is using my secret ID. Otherwise, I couldn't send under that ID, right? Right. You build that in so it detects if someone else uses that same ID. Anyway, and there we go. Video going from... From this one over to this one. Okay, no, <laughs> pointing at my screen. I have, I have like 100 pictures of myself on the screen now. But you get the idea, right? There's one sending browser and one receiving browser. And that's the basics. And the rest is, well, it gets a bit more complex. But this is how this works, yeah. pretty yeah. much. That's that's the very basics of OBS Ninja, just branching over from one uh, pusher to the viewer on another page, remote page, it could be anywhere in the world. Um, and that's the first episode, I think. I think so. That's the most important thing. So um, we'll be back with a bit more of an advanced concept in the next one, which is about rooms, because this rooms. gets more complex. Oh, man, that's, that does sound <laughs> pretty complex. <laughs> but we're that's using actually, rooms right now, so it's not it's not that hard. Even yeah. we figured it out. It's very simple. So uh, stay tuned. This will be... I we're winging this right now. So I guess this will be in a, in a YouTube playlist somewhere. So you can just go to the playlist and go to the next video and they will probably be numbered. So they will be in chronological order. And we're taking extra care that they are kind of, that they work with each other, that the, the, that the order makes sense. So there it is, OBS Ninja, lesson one.